Because of the following special broadcast, The Lucy Show and The Andy Griffith Show will not be presented this evening. Word Balloon is brought to you by the League of Word Balloon Listeners. Do you really want to, do you really want to take it? to Terrificon.com for ticket purchasing and to book your hotel accommodations. There are a lot of Comic Cons out there, but there is only one terrific Comic Con. Terrificon. Hi, I'm Alex Ross. The two pieces are sort of of a type. They're both kind of recreations of artwork that existed in the 90s. In fact, this piece here for the Avengers is in most ways a recreation or a tribute to George Perez's poster version from the mid-90s where he did a shot that featured in it uh, a figure of Captain America that was very similar to what I've done here, uh, positioning of uh, the Vision or positioning of Hawkeye, and I believe a few other elements are very similar to that piece, and it's consciously so. I was building off that inspiration, but I kind of refitted my design to fill out bigger shots of the figures so that I was making a wider composition and getting in a lot of the same characters but still not quite as many as what George himself did because George's thing was always to try and get in the maximum amount of content into pieces that he did. Welcome back, everybody. It's time again for Word Balloon, the comic book conversation show. John Suntress here. Hey, Luke's who's joining me, everybody. Uh, one of the original first guests of Word Balloon way back in 2005. It's Mike Hawthorne. Wow. Always happy to see you, Mike. Welcome back. How are you, John? Doing good, man. Doing really yes. good. good uh, not as you, good man. as you, though. Yeah, good I can't work. complain. <laughs> hey, I'm, seriously, man, I'm so happy for you. God, uh, you know, I don't even know how long it was when you were doing Deadpool. Had that yeah. great run of Marvel on Deadpool. Then you and Zdarsky killing on uh, Daredevil. And now you and Chip are killing it on Batman, man. Way to go. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a little surreal for sure. I think it's been, wow, it's probably going on 10 years since Deadpool. Wow. I know. I Somebody reminded me of that recently. I'm like, you're kidding me with this. Like, I can't. I, yeah. So, and uh, and then I, I was on it for almost six years, which was, you know, for me, a big deal. I, I don't know that I've ever been on anything that long. Uh, you know, so yeah, it's very cool. I, I, I don't know how it happened, uh, but I managed to check off a lot of bucket list characters <laughs> in the last 10 years. So that's cool, man. I hope, uh, I mean, I love what you're doing with Batman. It's a great shot, for example. Thank you. And, uh, oh man, that's an old, com whoa, these are some old commissions. That's crazy. Okay. Oh, but I love them, man. That's yeah, great. Yeah. I did put up, um, as the lobby card for this one, uh, you've been uh, putting up, uh, panels yeah. in process. And you yeah. had that great shot of Bruce and everything. But no, I love these. These are great. Thank and you, thank you. I, I will you have the opportunity to get beyond the Batman world and do more DC heroes? 
Uh, we haven't talked about it just yet. I, like, I, I'm just so I'm doing these bookends for this Gotham War event thing, and yeah. each issue's like 40 pages. So the whole yeah. thing is like doing a four issue arc of something. Sure. Um, and I was supposed to be jumping on to like a creator own thing, which we put on pause. So we just haven't, I haven't really committed to anything yet. I, I, I would like to stick around a little longer just because, um, yeah. When you can kind of always tell when everything's everybody's working well together and it feels right. Uh, so Batman's been like that. Chip's been like that. Ben's been great to work with. And so if I can, if my schedule allows for it, I'd like to stick around as long as possible. Unless they kick me out of Gotham. I, I understand. This yeah. this would be great, man. Truly. Uh, yeah. Here, I'll even bring up that uh, process uh, shot of Bruce. I'm assuming looking out of a window. There we go. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, it's a little blurry. You have to forgive me for that. But yeah, it's it's been real fun, man. Like it's um, I can't I, I can't uh, gotta be careful. Oh sure. The stuff here. So the last arc I did was all like, you know, it was Batman on a budget. Like he didn't have any money. Uh, he's in his universe where you know he's never existed, and so I had to make up a Batman suit. The first issue is the first two issues. There's no Batman. It's just Bruce running around beating people up um and which was super fun because i got to recreate literally everything from gotham itself to all this classic villains this thing's a little more like classic batman stuff so uh, i'm getting to draw bruce in the actual you know batman suit doing batman stuff it's fun it's very very fun i'm excited man no that's great and again you and you and chip really uh have this wonderful relationship yeah it, shows. it absolutely shows so clearly uh, I'm glad you guys are having a good time working. Yeah, out. yeah. I, I have to thank him. I mean, he asked for me on Batman. Um, it was a weird, just perfect timing. I was coming off of that Wonder Woman thing. Um, and, you know, honestly, part of it was I was on Daredevil and my contract at Marvel had run out. And I got offered this Wonder Woman thing who was like, it was just one of those things I had to take. She's always been kind of a, a mentioned bucket list characters. And I remember uh, when when it happened, my my only real concern was I didn't want Chip thinking I was leaving Daredevil because it's you know any hard feelings. And so I wrote him. I'm like, dude, I absolutely love what we're doing. Please don't think this is you. It's just I got to draw this thing. And he understood. I think as an artist, you kind of understand that there's certain things you want to draw and have to draw. Yeah. Um, so when we wrapped up Wonder Woman, he was just like, hey, you want to come and do Batman? Which was like. Of course, like how do you not want to draw Batman? <laughs> and uh, so it's worked out great. And and Ben uh, Abernathy, the editor on it, has been a real pleasure, man. Like I'm not just saying it because the guy is my boss. I mean the guy is. I you know we often you'll hear like freelancers complain about editors because you know ah they give us an assignment and then they go on vacation. This guy's like, my God, I'll send him an email and he'll respond and it'll hit me that wait it's six in the morning where he is. And then he'll respond in the middle of the night. He responds on weekends. This guy's really like a one-man army. He's, so the team's great. I'm super happy. Um, and then this current event thing is with Teeny Howard, who's sort of, I guess they're, they're, I don't know exactly how they're breaking down the task, but I suspect it's Chip writing a lot of Batman stuff, Teeny writing a lot of the Catwoman stuff, and it's really smart. So I'm excited. That's excellent, man. I, uh, I have a feeling I'll be pulling other either commissions or – uh, I, I, I'm not sure you know where these things landed. Dom Gomez though says, love the process stuff you post on Patreon. Thank you. That's Dom. Cool, I appreciate man. that, man. Yeah, yeah. That's great. I'm glad you have a Patreon dude. That's, that's wonderful that you have that. Yeah. I jumped on it. Like I want to say maybe 10, 12 years before I actually committed to starting it. Um, okay. and you know, I, I started on a comic self-publishing and have always wanted to continue doing that. So Patreon made sense as like kind of a, base camp for all the stuff like these art books over my shoulder here uh i would just show all the art on patreon slowly build up projects and then you know we'll do a kickstarter and put a book out or something that's great you know robert atkins uh was really smart about i think building a good social media yeah. following and using crowdfunding tactics yeah scotty young and i for years both kind of adopted patreon at the same time yeah and i always appreciated comparing notes with scotty and everything so yeah 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 i i think i was reluctant to start it at first because i felt like how does it look to be drawing deadpool or batman 
and being on Patreon. And I felt like it was more of an independent creator's tool. And I felt like an independent creator, but I didn't want anybody to think I was just like, hey, give me money for this thing. Um, yeah. But I realized like I, it, it makes sense. You know, social media is a mess and you never know yeah. when someone's going to X something out. <laughs> <laughs> and, Come on, today it's X yeah, now. It's exactly, not, not Twitter exactly. anymore. The God, dumbest it's, thing, dude. <laughs> that is so stupid, and I don't. <laughs> it's so funny. Mike and I were talking before the show. We don't want to get into politics, but I'm sorry, Elon. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> well, I, I have I, I have this inside joke. I want to start posting art like with three tweets in a chain, so they're always triple X tweets. Um, <laughs> but it, it's the point is, is I wanted a home base. And websites are great, but Patreon builds it all for you. And I can make it free or I can put stuff behind the That's sort true. of wall and, and charge a little extra for it. And it's it's just a smart way to to plan ahead for, you know, building up your own projects. Absolutely, man. No, and, and I think that's great. Remind me, Mike, because I think the last time we spoke was when you either released or got the rights back to one of your uh creator own things yeah yeah i that was uh so it's, it's been a couple years it probably was the last time we spoke uh yeah. it was happiness will follows which was uh it has a very long history where it was going to come out through vertigo and that was before the new 52 and vertigo sort of you know had some troubles sure uh and we had a, a little bit of a legal fight to get the rights back and then i sat on a thing for 10 years uh, before getting talked into showing it to the folks at Boom with uh, my buddy Jerry, who writes uh, some little book. What's that thing? Oh, speaking of X, yeah, he writes some X-Men book, I think. <laughs> um, oh, Jerry Duggan, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, he convinced me to show it to the Boom folks, and they put it out, and it's been it's been great. Um, I mean, it's not – it's more in line with my own personal work, but most of the folks that are probably out there don't know me for that stuff um, because, you know – you. I had a, since I began my career, I would do a, you know, work for hire gig and then use those to fund the creator own things. Yeah. And almost nobody knows about the creator own things. So, um, but this book has been one of those like little kind of quiet, chugging along, uh, doing well kind of books. And uh, recently the, I forget if it's a school district of New York City or the library system, but one of them put in a huge order for like, they're just, wow dropping these books in all the libraries in New York. So I'm excited. It's very cool. Um, yeah, it's 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 a pleasure to get to do the stuff with Boom. They've been great. Uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, I got no complaints. Hey, man, uh, you're smart about this, and it's something <clears throat> that I've seen in the 18 years that I've been doing Word Balloon in terms yeah. of, uh, you know, obviously doing your creator-owned stuff, yeah. but, but building your name at the big two – yeah. And then taking that audience with you and happiness will follow. God, I remember, uh, wasn't it nominated for um, a Ringo? Nothing. I got nothing what? for it. Yeah. I'm oh, one of those man. guys. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, 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 uh, huh. I, no, it's all good. It's, it's, it's one of those things that um, I, I don't do anything to push it. Uh, I, I think I was naive to like, you see the awards and you always think, Oh, that's cool. People are, you know, my friends are getting stuff. Um, and I, I am also kind of aware that like the judging is, it's always somebody's taste and sure. I, who knows if these folks even were aware of the book. Um, and it, it but yeah, I haven't, uh, I'm not, I'm not, Jerry used to tease me with, with Deadpool that, you know, we won't ever get nominated because we've been popular. Which I, think is like, <laughs> I don't know how true that is. Uh, you know, Hitchcock never was really nominated for any of his films. Yeah. And yeah. when they finally did it, acknowledge him with a Lifetime Achievement Award, he went up and all he said was, thank you. And we're up, <laughs> and it's like, you know, kind of like, yeah. well, you've ignored me for 40 years of my career. Okay, thanks, I guess. So, yeah, no. yeah. But the great yeah. thing is, I'm so glad to hear the library system or the yeah. schools our technology. It's a great personal story. And I, Thank and you. I remember it coming out at the same time as Jim Terry's very personal story about growing up as well. Gotcha. Yeah. And, and, and then really, that's why I think of both of you in terms of that uh, really nice uh, words here from uh, various people watching us right now. Uh, chaos, chaos form taking in all the information. Oh, awesome. And, and Jay Robert Dean says, Mike, good to see you again. Hello. What's up, Jerry? Well. And uh, Peter, is saying even good evening. So no, I'm glad, glad everybody's watching. I hope you're enjoying this again, man. No, you're killing, you're killing it on Batman. 
And God, looking back at you know stuff like Daredevil. Oh wait, no, oh, that's Deadpool. Deadpool, Deadpool. That's yeah, Deadpool. Right. Never mind. No, no, um, no, it's all good. But here's Deadpool in the hand. Yeah. This, <laughs> yeah. this was actually also a commission. It's weird, you know. Like I would get, <laughs> you, you get fans who are like, "Hey, I, I would love to see you on this book. Would you do a commission?" And uh, yeah, it's almost like uh, I, like like trying out for the book itself. <laughs> Yeah, no, absolutely, man. Yeah. That's great. And I have, and I assume this might be you. The great thing is, man, truly, you draw beautiful women. Well, thank and, you. Yeah, and there's yeah. Black Widow right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's another pretty old commission. So yeah, it's right. stuff. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I won't deny, man. I'm Google searching, and I'm like, all right, let me, let me find what kind of fun that I can all find. Good. And it's no, it's terrific, man. Absolutely. And uh, now here's an X Men design process page of Nightcrawler. Yeah, yeah. Where I forgot the tail. <laughs> I yeah, I, I um, I did quite a bit of. I sorry, I should just say it's amazing. But no, um, no, I love that. That's fantastic. Yeah. Jeez, yeah. I didn't no, even there, think of his tail. You're right. Yeah, there were two passes on this guy. I think we did, that's not the one we end up going with. But okay, uh, I was at Marvel for a very long time and was yeah. lucky enough to either redesign dozens and dozens of characters or create new ones or combination ones. I think I must have done. I guess just about the entire X-Men team there for some arc they were doing. I, I confess, I don't remember the name of the storyline, but. Um, well, this said, and I, cool. and I didn't recognize this. It says. Uh, Exalted X-Men. Exalted X-Men. Yeah, yeah. 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 I don't know if they went with that. That was how it originally was. And it was, you know, I think it was slightly in the future. Uh, yeah. But. Okay. Uh, yeah. It, it's, it's fun to think of like the little kid me who always wanted to work at Marvel and then look at all this stuff that I've gotten to play with all the toys uh, and, and know that there's, I mean, there's even like, there's two different Mike Hawthorns in the Marvel U. Both of them are dead. Uh, so I've, it's, 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 it's very fun. It's gotten, I've gotten to like uh, seed the ground quite a bit there with, with Marvel. So is, are you saying characters in the Marvel? Yeah. Universe? Yeah. There's two. There's one. That's hilarious. Um, so the one is funny uh, writer friend of mine, uh, Ivan Brandon, who is oh, uh, everybody yeah. always compares to kind of an evil, uh, uh, like a supervillain. He um, <laughs> he put, <laughs> he was writing, I forget if it was Punisher or Wolverine. And he, uh, as a joke, you know, he, we're close friends. He's been to the house and um, sure. he yeah. made my, he made my wife a villain. Uh, my wife's from Greece. Like you and I have spoke about your Greek descent. Absolutely, and, uh, man. There you and, go. Uh, he he had her. She was kind of. She didn't have any powers, but she could just convince people into doing crazy stuff. And she gets me killed. And then uh, I think I don't think Jerry was aware of it. Oh, by the way, Ivan did that, and I didn't catch it. And he didn't tell me he did it. This maniac waited. I think it was damn near eight years for the punchline. Like <laughs> eight years later, I forget what it was. Um, oh, I remember. I was Google searching my wife's name because we were talking about how. Uh, you have to register. This is goofy, but uh, you have to register with some uh, site to have them take your personal information off, like your phone number and address and stuff off the web. Sure. And so I Googled her name and I'm like, wait, why is this on Marvel's uh, website? Because my wife has a very unique Greek name. And uh, that's how I found out. So I called him. I'm like, you son of a bitch. You did this eight years ago? Um <laughs> It was the funniest damn thing. And he just, he quietly wrote the joke and never told me. So, yeah. Um, how is, is Ivan doing okay? I, mean, I know he had a health scare yeah, in a while. Yeah, he had a, he had a heart attack. He, yeah. He's, I I mean, you know, it's a struggle, obviously, to get yeah. his health back. But I I, uh, I spoke to him fairly recently, and he seems to be doing better. He jokes that it's going to force him to lose weight, so he's going to get hot in his old age. <laughs> that a boy. Yeah, he's a good-looking guy. You should trim down. Yeah. No, honestly... I really like Ivan a lot. I, we talked about Cross Bronx and uh, some yeah. other things that he's done over the years. I've always appreciated Ivan's uh, uh, writing and everything. I think, I think yeah. he's great. Yeah. And I forget, remind me of what your wife's Greek name is again. Naspina. Naskina? De Despina. D-E-S-P-I-N-A. Despina. Yeah. It's, well, it's the Americanized version. It's obviously not really spelled that Okay. Way. Okay. Because yeah. Well, yeah, sure. And I phonetically or whatever. Yeah. Does yeah. it translate to anything in English? Uh, what is it? I, it? It's it doesn't it doesn't it's not, it's not a clean translation. It's like, uh, well, the meaning of it is means like for the people or something, and it's 
associated with wow. uh, uh, Mary and the, you know, Jesus's mother. Oh, okay, sure. Wow. Um, I don't think there's a clean translation, though, unfortunately. Okay. Well, you so, know, my my name is Ioannis and yeah. uh, John. Yannis. Yannis. <laughs> exactly. Yannis is Johnny, yeah. basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, yeah. no, I have a lot of friends who've called me Yanni over over the years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, no, his hair is much prettier than my hair. Good Lord, yeah. He's going to grow it out, man. I, I, well, Mike, I was telling you, man, I was a little worried. It looks like it's short, but. Uh, yeah, I got, I still got it. Don't oh, no, it's it. exactly, man. You're still rock and roll. That's, <laughs> that's outstanding. Pete yeah. Beiser uh, says Daredevil and Batman have been tied together with yeah. many of the same creators touching both. And I, Pete, you're reading my mind. What are the similarities? And the difference of working with these two worlds, and more importantly, these two characters who are rooftop and swinging characters, but there is kind of a subtle athleticism difference. How would you describe it? I, I'm glad he asked because this was a real struggle for me early on. So I feel like I took naturally to Daredevil. Uh, it took some soul searching to figure out my approach to Batman. Um, and I couldn't figure out, like, why am I stuck on this, right? And uh, I realized that for me, and I, I don't want to speak for anybody else and the other artists, but for me, Daredevil is very of this world, right? It's in New York. I could just look at, like, what neighborhoods I wanted to put in and find yeah. those places. And, uh, you know, he's, like, recovering Catholic, just like me. So I, I felt <laughs> like I could figure this guy out. Um and, and I think the key for me was to make it feel like this is just a guy. I had to make it believable and kind of feel real. Like this is just a guy with, a, with an insane ability in the real world. And with Batman, that didn't feel right at all. Um, and I, I, I remember being on, I was walking my dogs. I'm like, why can't I figure this thing out? So I sort of, part of my process is to like, when I hear I'm getting a book, Hopefully there uh, is enough lead time that I will start a new sketchbook and just tear through it, trying to figure out my approach. And and um, I just couldn't. If you look at those old commissions you mentioned, like I'm drawing Batman different every single time. And it's partly because I never really nailed him down. Um, and then on this walk, I don't know why it just hit me that Batman has to be kind of operatic, operatic. Right, it has to have this kind of bigger than the world feel to it. Um, you know, you you have to like, you have to go with a little bit of melodrama in the way that you would see in an opera, where you still can like uh, believe the character in the moment, but there's still a little sense of like I'm looking at a staged piece of art. You know, I'm not just looking at a window in reality. I'm I'm making. Um, I you have to make the conscious decision that I'm going to really make everything feel very orchestrated. And uh, with my first arc, so once I had that idea, I sort of went back to my art history books and I'm looking and it hit me. I've like really needed kind of a Gothic approach to this thing with the, I don't want to get too in the weeds with this, but with Gothic art, you see a lot of these like stacked figures and um, you'll see, you know, like like uh, relief sculptures where there's kind of a narrative feel from left to right to it. So that first arc, there's a lot of that where, you know, you're supposed to read the panel. I mean, we always design the pages to be read left to right, but I would try to do these action scenes where it felt like a kind of a gothic, uh, uh, not deep space like perspective, um, and and everything felt very kind of orchestrated and hopefully fun to look at because of that you know like um where daredevil i wanted to make it look like you just you turn the corner and you see this guy fighting someone uh with with with, with batman you really are sitting in the audience looking at this stage and and watching this thing unfold in front of you so i don't know if that makes any sense but that it, that was my approach it absolutely makes sense and it's funny i don't know how much time uh, you might spend looking at what Rom and I'm forgetting who his artist is right now on Detective, and that's okay. a very operatic, very lyrical approach yeah. to Batman in yeah. his story yeah. and stuff. So yeah, I, again, yeah, I, I don't know, but I, I I've talked to Rom recently about that. Um, you know, I, as far as I've been looking at a lot of Jim Aparo, um, you know, just because that that yeah, I mean, it's just yeah. that those are the approaches that I mean, I, I think everybody goes back to the well of. You know, year one, and Mazzuccelli is literally a genius. And I will, I based 
certain scenes on what he's doing in there for sure, for sure. Um, but that felt a little too real for what I wanted to do. I, I really went with like Neil Adams and Jim Aparo and looking at that like, like big bombastic action and like movements that just explode, you know, like, like, so yeah, uh, yeah that was it for me, man. That was the, the and then once I got that figured out, uh, I was off to the races. I, could, I felt comfortable with the character then. That's excellent. Uh, Wes says it's Ivan Hayes who's doing. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Okay. You know. Oh, that's nice, uh, Ronaldo. Uh, Ronaldo is uh, now subscribing to the channel. Oh, nice. Thanks yeah. He's, I really appreciate it, man. Great. Oh, that's oh, he's one of your guys? That's cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks, man. Thank he's you very much. That's been very nice. Uh, <laughs> no, everyone, everyone who tips and uh, subscribes to the channel, greatly appreciate it. I mentioned Patreon before as well. And yeah. uh, truly, guys, uh, and women. Thank you for your support. It, it really it means a lot. The physicality of Daredevil and Batman, I think, is interesting. And even further, Jerry Mahan was telling me he was drawing uh, the uh, one I think detective when Dick Grayson was Batman. Yeah, and Batman was unstuck in time, and you know it was, it was Dick and Damien. And he yeah. said, you know, Nightwing and and Dick as Batman is more of a middleweight. And Batman is literally, we were talking earlier about boxing and stuff. Off yeah, here. yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and Batman's kind of a heavyweight. And I think Daredevil is a lanky middleweight. Almost, exactly. I mean, Tom, Tommy Hearns was a little too thin, but, <laughs> you know, kind of, you know, or Antonio Tarver, exactly a right. heavyweight, like a yeah, tall, yeah. thin, but but definitely, you know, a strong guy and everything. Yeah, so, 100%. Like, you definitely have to draw Batman a little like a tank. Um it, it's kind of I'm, so it bugs me a little bit because um, I'm always like, usually the first thing I'll do is I'll make a height chart for all the characters in the book and then a weight chart and try to draw them so that they feel right. Batman's one of those characters that they'll say weighs, you know, 220, but you're like, yeah, wow. that guy's not 220 at 6'1. At um, you know, that this is a tank of a guy. So you have to kind of draw him. I always think of him as, you know, Daredevil. Um, is going to like bounce and jump when he probably doesn't have to. Uh, Batman's going to swing and land kind of heavy, uh, even though he's light on his feet. This this guy's yeah. like you know um, he's he's going to kind of smash through things where Daredevil will have to jump over them, kind of thing. I hear you. You know, it's yeah. funny, and even now talking about it, and everyone always wants to see a crossover of Batman and Daredevil. Hell, I remember when Brew Baker and, and Bendis were talking about this in the early 2000s. And then, unfortunately, Bob Wayne representing DC is like, well, that's never going to happen. And it's like, <laughs> all right, kill Joy. I love Bob. Don't get me wrong. Really <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He's a good guy. But it's like, yeah, all right, whatever. Um, oh, man, Dom Gomez, good comment here. He says, your Gotham is fantastic as well. Thank you. Is there a Burton influence in there with the backgrounds so it's funny it's not a burn influence we're probably looking at the same original stuff i'm looking at a lot of like um 1920s 30s new york a lot of like uh, uh, uh neo-gothic architecture a lot of classical architecture um i'm definitely not i'm trying not to draw a modern new york right i'm drawing uh a new york of you know uh Somewhere, some vague space between like uh, World War One and 1980s, you know, like where you'll see a little bit of the 80s kind of griminess, but um, I'm, I'm really trying to stick to these kind of classical New York, which you sort of think of New York when you when you sort of close your eyes. Um, most of the buildings are like glass and steel. But I, I think in my head, that's not the version of New York I think about if I close my eyes and try to imagine it. So, I envy I envy you growing up in New York because you're right. I mean, God, in the 20 years that I've come – well, I guess it's a little more than that because it started happening in the 90s when I was yeah. covering boxing. But um, I do. I, I miss – and I see it in the photographs and in film. And you yeah. do. You kind of miss classic New York. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's a reason why they called it Gotham City, obviously. Yeah, yeah. And before anybody said, I I moved out of New York when I was like 10. So I don't want anybody thinking like, I'm, I'm very careful not to claim New York in that way, although my family's all still there. Because everybody's like, oh, what the neighborhood? I, yeah, I'm like, uh, I can't give you directions. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, man. You know, yeah. and, and modern Gotham, uh, again, Jeremy Hahn, I remember uh, 
him being in town for a Chicago comic convention. And we were having dinner one night downtown and he's yeah. taking photos of the buildings and our elevated trains, the L trains and yeah. stuff. And they're like, what are you doing? He's like, this is research, man. This is, got, you know, yeah. because of the Absolutely. Nolan movies, the first two Nolan movies, Chicago was Gotham. I mean, the third one was Pittsburgh. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, I was just like, say, yeah, one of them is ours. So I'm in Pennsylvania now. So we, we only claim the Pittsburgh Gotham. That's all right. <laughs> I, 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 hey, I love, I, I mean, I haven't, been, I haven't been to Pittsburgh yet, but I've been to Philadelphia many times. I, I really love the classic big cities. Yeah, and also yeah, being yeah. a broadcast nerd, really respect the history of broadcasting when each major city was its own kingdom. Right. And, yeah, you know, yeah. God, I mean, and Philadelphia is a very important broadcast. Oh, yeah, it's where Dick Clark, right? He got his, he was, this was his home base. I'm close to the Philly now. I'm about an hour, hour and some change uh, uh, west of Philly. Cool. And I lived there for about five years or so. Um, but, you know, one of my kids is in Pittsburgh. And they're like a world apart. I mean, Pennsylvania's one is unique, not to go off on a tangent, but no, no, I love this. Go on. It's, it, Pittsburgh is a beautiful city. If you get a chance to visit, definitely go out. Uh, it's a whole different vibe than than Philadelphia. I mean, I went, I was spending a the night there and I, I pulled into a hotel parking lot and uh, I realized after I pulled in that you needed to check in and get your car to, like, you couldn't just pull into the parking lot. It was locked up. Sure. And as I pull in, this lady pulls behind me and I'm thinking, oh shit, like this, it's, you know, I'm thinking in terms of how it'd be at Philly. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to argue with this lady. She's gonna call me all kinds of stupid for pulling in and not knowing what's back. And um, so I get out of my car and I go over to her, expecting to get cursed out. And she goes, "Oh, want me to let you in?" And she hops out of her car and like scans her car to let me in. And I'm like, "What the hell's going on here?" Pittsburgh's just like nicer. And the way it was explained to me is, you know, it's so far from Philly to Pittsburgh. And the mountain ranges, they're the Blue Mountains, and it's like, it's it's almost more like a Midwestern city in terms of its attitude. Oh yeah, you know, people are very friendly and nice, and it's unnerving. I'm not used to it being on the East Coast of Pennsylvania. We're on the uh, soda side, and then they're on the uh, pop side, or the Pennsylvania has all these weird boundaries. Or we're on the uh, Wawa side, and they're on the sheet side. I'm with you. I um. I, I, I yet to visit the city. My buddy Chad, who uh, helped me uh, put put on the Mainframe Comic Con uh, yeah. online conventions we did during COVID, yeah. he's a Pittsburgh guy. Eventually, I'm going to hit his town, and I've got several other friends there. Gotta I got to I got to go uh, have those uh, those sandwiches where they put the fries on the sandwiches. I forget. Oh, <laughs> yeah. There's a place called Promanti Brothers. That's yeah. what I was thinking of. Exactly, Promanti. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We got one here actually, and they they got. Oh wow. Yeah, they have a sandwich that literally is every kind of meat you can have with an egg on top. I mean, it's ridiculous. <laughs> my, I took my boy there, and he of course ordered one. And I'm like, "What are you gonna do? The thing is, it's you're gonna you're gonna need a week to eat this stupid thing." <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, all right, here's some more, more great comments. Uh, Robert says, um, "Mike, you uh, could always mess with folks' minds and tell them you're based your Gotham on the 1940 serials, which were filmed in the suburbs of LA." I did not oh, know that. Man. Turner Classic Movies is running. One of the Batman serials right now every Saturday wow, morning. Wow, really? Yeah, and I, you know, that's where the Batcave came from. Was the that's serial so funny, man? Yeah, and there's yeah, a great man. like shot of the actor in that in that Bat costume just sitting at a desk, and you see the cave. Oh yes, I've him. seen that, and it's scary as hell, man. <laughs> Good. And, yeah. and Jared is great for this kind of information. The guy knows like it, it's. I'm, there's never a subject where the guy doesn't know some deep dive information about it. So yeah, thanks, man. That's hilarious, Patrick Wedge. Uh, hey, talent, Patrick. The talent Mike showed jumping from a grease grounded Wonder Woman story to an urban Gotham story was nothing less than incredible. Couldn't couldn't set it better, man. Nice Two nights, nice. thank you, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, the the Wonder Woman was a special gig. It was a thing. Um, I'd spent a summer there with my, my wife and the kids. And uh, I was working on, I think I was working on Fear Agent. That's how long ago it was. Ah, nice. And, yeah. And um, I did some sketching at the Parthenon. And this is when they first, matter of fact, we were there, like, I think the day, first or second day that they opened the new museum there uh, at the base of the Parthenon to try to make the English feel guilty and return all the shit they stole. 
For um, real, man. Yeah. 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 If you don't I know the story, that. you should look it up. It's shitty. It's really, really bad. Uh, everyone go on uh, YouTube and watch John Oliver's uh, Last Week Tonight. Uh, oh, did he do a thing on it? On, yeah. And not just not just Greece, but all these different uh, yeah, wonderful yeah, yeah. countries that really uh, a lot of British and French and other major European country poachers yeah. Yeah. just kind of took their stuff. And they did. They did. And it's very important stuff that took from the yeah. Greeks. And the Greeks will never forgive them for it. This museum is a special treat for me because I'm walking through it. And, uh, you know, I'm not Greek, but I've been, I, I parachuted in and I've been in Greek <laughs> culture because my wife's Don't like, blame you. Don't yeah, worry. I, as, as Lord God of Greek comics. <laughs> You're in, Mike. Don't worry. It's all right. Yeah, man. I, it, it's they're wonderful. Um, but I mean, like my 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 mother-in-law quite literally came here on a boat. I mean, it's like yeah. I didn't think that was really a thing. I thought it was just a way to oh, yeah. meet somebody. Um, so my wife's you know first four years of her life she she spent there, and uh, wow. I go to this museum and it's great because the the way the stories that I heard was that the English were always like you guys can't take care of this stuff. You don't know what you're doing. Maybe if you ever build a, a decent museum, we'll give it back. So the Greeks were like, okay, we'll build. And they built a museum. And it's beautiful. And they did a uniquely Greek thing in my mind, which I think is hysterical, is they built the thing and then they put spaces for like, here's the thing they stole. If they ever bring it back, we'll put it here. And they have like a little outline of the missing thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the English, of course, were like, psych, just kidding. We're not. We're keeping it. Um, uh, and, and truly, there have been people from the British Museum who are I, I can't help but embarrass themselves trying to justify these yeah. terrible things. And it's yeah. like, and really that was kind of, it was almost an editorial from Oliver going, Hey man, like give the shit back. Yeah. Yeah. This is they, so wrong. And some of them are like, well, you know, and especially for more, uh, I don't want to use, I don't, forgive me if I'm using the wrong phrase, everybody. I forget the modern phrase for describing third world countries now, yeah. um, you know, developing, developing yeah. nations perhaps. Yeah. But um, that, you know, well, it's better that it's here because then everybody can see it. And it's like, bullshit. Yeah, Put it dude. back in those damn countries. And I know with the Greeks, too, I believe this is right, where sometimes they would take a statue and break off the feet. And the feet were left in Greece. So yeah. they're in some places. There's just the feet. Yeah. And it's like a, a drawing of the rest of the statue or yeah. a photograph. It's exact. I mean, it, it's sanity. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's called yeah. the Elgin Marbles, by the way, for anybody that wants to look up the history. And it's, it's Elgin because of Lord Elgin, the guy that stole all the shit. Uh, well, they, okay, I should be careful because they technically he bought it from the Turks that were, uh, you know, it, it's a yeah. whole long story. Oh, I will yeah. not pretend to be an expert. I will shut up about it now. All right. But, well, uh, everyone, you know, that's the point what is, is I was there. I got to draw some of these things from life. And I always told myself if I ever got to draw Wonder Woman, I'd make her look like this. Uh, and if you want to Google uh, uh, the the uh, the pillars at the Parthenon that are sculpted to look like women, or the terracotta pots, you'll see they're very unique. Um, you know, they, they call it the Roman nose. Sometimes you'll see, often see uh, what they call the Greek nose, where the nostrils are exaggerated. It's like cartoon stereotype stuff. But the more Romanized nose is what you see in the ancient Greek art. So that's what I went with with uh, Diana, uh, which uh, was kind of a lightning rod. It pissed off lots of people because it wasn't the Wonder Woman that everybody expected to see. Um, but I, I made it clear to the Wonder to the DC folks that you know this is the version I'd like to do, and they said, "Well, that works perfectly because we were doing this sort of alternate uh, black label version of Wonder Woman." Uh, so I'm very proud of it. Uh, I know some people really, 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 really didn't like it, but I mean that's kind of part of the gig you you have a a way of wanting to draw a thing and if you're lucky enough you're able to convince the folks the powers that be to let you do it your way and that's going to annoy some folks but lots of people really 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 enjoyed it so and that a boy no yeah. absolutely hey uh you know i mean it was really more hippolyta's story but <laughs> kelly sue and nicola and um uh, gene ha and of course starting with um phil Jimenez, that yeah. wonderful uh, Hippolyta origin story uh, it definitely strays from the DC depictions yeah. of uh, Thermoscara and Hippolyta. Yeah. But it, it was a wonderful traditional story. So, no, I absolutely appreciate this. That, that thing was amazing. And, and uh, Don. Yes. I, I just say, saw the comment. For the, for the audio audience, Don says, 
Batman is like a Rodan uh, sculpture. And yeah, man, I'll bring back your uh, your Bruce Process page because yes. you can really see the influence here. I, I I am so I didn't I was trying not because I feel like I'm getting a little nerdy with art history stuff. <laughs> uh, but there is a Rodin Museum in Philadelphia. And when I was in college there and I was in art school, I spent a lot of time there to the point where um, they would let me move chairs around so I could because I would basically go down there and practice drawing the sculptures. And, you know, you've been to a museum. That's not normal. They normally don't let you move the furniture around. Um, but I got I was just there all the time. So I could I would sit there for hours and draw these sculptures uh, also. And I cannot officially take credit for this. But I did notice the last time I went that now they have a little table with sketchbooks and stuff out. Wow. That's awesome. I don't know if it was me. But yeah, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> enough people did it that they, you know, it's it's a popular place to go draw. Um, but absolutely I considered that the sort of big, bulky, heavy limbs. Um, they're just kind kind of like uh that just everything feels physical. The guy, you know, just walking. I I, I even wanted the cape. Uh, there's a famous multi-figure sculpture called the Burgers of Calais, where uh, these these people are being marched off to their death, and you see that even the drapery feels heavy on them, and um, they're, they're sort of in various degrees of dress. And I wanted everything to feel like that, even the cape, you know, to feel like I'm probably spending too much time on it and overthinking it, because I'll look at other people's Batman, and I just love the sort of expressive, you know, doing this cool stuff with the sh the, the shapes of the cape. And I'm drawing it so it looks all wrinkly and heavy and wet. But um, I just want everything to feel very physical in this book. I, I understand, man. And honestly, it is the distinct different takes of Batman that I always find interesting. Compare yeah. even something subtle. Because when I first had Neil Adams on, I made the mistake of saying a Perro's uh, Batman was influenced by Neil. And Neil, to his credit, because Neil could be very, Neil could be, very egotistical and he's like oh no 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 jim's batman was jim's batman but yeah. then you look at their their versions of batman compared to marshall rogers what yeah. he did with the cape and his cape is very light and flowing yeah and then you get what you're doing and stuff and no i think i think that's as interesting the various forms that batman takes depending yeah. on the artist you know i should uh, opportunity to tease sean martinborough coming on wednesday night nice uh, for the very first time Amazing. Oh, I'm, Honestly, Mike, I mean, you and I, we've known each other a long time, and I'm yeah. happy to have you back. But I was, I've was i really tried to get Sean on for years, and yeah. finally our schedules are synced, so we're going to do awesome. it uh, Wednesday night. I cannot wait to talk to him because yeah. his run on Detective with Rucka was, a, again, a very different Batman. Yeah. And it's like I, I appreciate the differences. I think it's great. Um, yeah, it, it, it really is like I think Marvel's equivalent is probably Spider-Man, although everybody thinks of Daredevil. Uh, there's always, everybody has their own take on Spider-Man, and you always want to get that right. And, uh, uh, it's, you know, Batman's probably, I mean, it's just one of those characters. That, and I think it was partly why I was a little intimidated coming into it. It's just like, what can I do? What, like, who, what can be brought to Batman that hasn't already been done better by a hundred different artists? You know what I mean? So sure. um, I just decided, like, I got to let that go. Uh, and and uh, and and just figure out whatever it is that I do, and just do that. You know, I mean, because you can tie yourself up in knots just thinking about how long do I make his ears? You know, like totally like Marshall Rogers, who like you know they go they go way out, or even yeah. Kelly Jones. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. I man, I I really beat myself up over that because I think I'm I'm a shorter ear guy, but I just realized like uh, it's I need something in the middle, uh, and it was Jim Aparo's work. Uh, that made me realize, like, yeah, I need to, I need to add that it's, it's so important to the silhouette, right? Uh, and it sells the character even from a distance, you know. So, yeah, for sure, it's that's hilarious because I remember uh, Norton was drawing Batman for the Trinity book, okay. and I asked, and he's, he's a short-eared Batman yeah. guy. Every now and then on social media, you always see like, all right, what do you prefer, long-eared Batman, short-eared Batman? Yep, I'm like yep. any Batman is, is totally fine for me. And speaking of the <laughs> Uh, West wants to know. We got into it a little bit earlier on, but he'd love to hear more about how you came up with Batman's impromptu costume when he transported to the other universe and had to use yeah. other elements. Yeah, that that's funny because um, I noticed news stories popping up, assuming that 
I was making fun of something from the uh, Christopher Nolan movies. I so I will admit now I've never seen the Christopher Nolan Batman movies, and evidently, oh, wow. makes, yeah, he, he may, evidently makes a reference to like the difference between the between him and some other guys is that he's not wearing hockey pads or something. And um, when they said, "Hey, we have this Batman, and he's got no money," uh, and I joked that like I keep getting typecasted because. Like I either get the guys, the broke versions of characters, or uh, the versions that have gone to jail because I'm the guy that like you know I've had family in jail and everything. <laughs> um, <laughs> but with Batman, this this made up version, I I decided early on that he can't make, he can't fabricate anything, he can't make anything, so it has to be all found object stuff, and it makes the most sense to to uh, go into the world of sports. Uh, fighting sports, contact sports, yeah. and military surplus stuff, right? So Absolutely, yes. If you look at the first two issues of Batman, I mean, um, the cops are dressed in a very distinct way, uh, sort of designed them to feel a little like half Gestapo, half like uh, this kind of, uh, uh, just this kind of just scary look to them. Um and I thought, well, the first thing Batman is going to do is take gear from those guys as he beats them up. So you see him wearing what looks like their kind of uh, army fatigue pants and boots. Uh, and then I went to, uh, so starting from the top down, I gave him a helmet that was like a uh, skateboarding or a bike, a BMX helmet. Sure. That he screws to homemade uh, bat ears to. Uh, and you'll appreciate this. We're talking boxing. If you look at the side pieces to his helmet, uh, they're from Olympic boxing. You know, they put the, the the gear down the side of the face. Yeah. To keep guys, it's more humane. It's to keep guys from getting knocked out and getting their jaws broken. Yeah, or concussed. Um, absolutely. Yeah. So he, I'm thinking he's going to fight all these big guys who are all on, you know, the, uh, Venom. Everybody's bigger than him. So he's got to, like, really kind of cover up. He's, he's fighting above his uh, weight class. Absolutely. So, <laughs> I gave him a uh, when I when I was a kid I played football and I was a linebacker and he gave us these cushions to keep our necks from snapping back. So I gave him one of those on his cape. It looks yeah, like a yeah. stylized collar, but it's a it's a cushion because uh, I figured he's gonna get punched in the head. He's gonna keep you know try to keep his neck from breaking. Sure. Um, I wanted to give him a full chest piece. It was the only not note I got from Chip. He really wanted a big bat symbol. Um, so I just in my head thought, well, he probably has it under clothes. Um, yeah. And then he's got, you know, various shoulder pads and things from like hockey and lacrosse. Uh, my, my boy used to play lacrosse. He has, you know, I sort of gave him the stylized forearm pads, um, you know, shin guards, knee pads, just things you would want to wear if you had to fight a bunch of people bigger than you. And I always – I'm sorry, finish your thought. No, no, it was all found object stuff. It was yeah. all theoretically stuff that – I'm I, I'm kind of excited to hit some cons and see if there's any cosplayers because if if you do your homework, this thing you literally could just go on like you know Walmart or uh, or Amazon.com or some something. And just, I don't know why I said .com, Amazon, uh, and find all these things and build your. I, I'm showing my age, John. It's all right, man. www.com. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know. I hear you, man. That's all right. Yeah. Jesus, you know I've got at least a decade on you, if not more. No, get out of here. I'm, I'm 72. I, uh, shut up. You're right now, you're 72. <laughs> Stop it. Uh, no, it's, uh, I, I hear you, and I think that's really cool uh, that it is that kind of found uniform and everything, and that you're right. You know, the Nolan, it is funny, because certainly in Batman Begins, as in, as in the title, you do see, like, Nolan and Alfred, or uh, Bruce and Alfred, really building the suit. And yeah. I even like Pattinson's suit as well. So did I. I haven't seen a movie, but yeah, that that look I definitely really really liked. You know, yeah, I, I mean, realistic. I did get some. I saw some people critique because there's like this thing of just I don't like a thing. I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to tag you so you see all of my complaints. So there's that going on. But I saw a guy complaining. It's like you know, it's it's lost on the more realistic you make Batman, the less believable he is. And I'm like, well, first of all, that's not your idea. I remember reading the intro to. Uh, year one also from Mazzuccelli. So, but uh, you're right. I agree. But that doesn't make sense to the story. I'm in service. My job is to be in service to the story. And uh, he should have looked 
like he had to cobble this thing together. And that's what I went for. I saw people complaining, this is the ugliest Batman I ever saw. I'm like, it's not supposed to be sexy. This guy, this he doesn't have any resources. I mean, he's screwing this together with whatever screws and bolts he can find laying around, you know, like, and, and uh, I could have just gone for, I'm going to make this thing sexy and awesome. And, but it wouldn't have fit the story at all. Right. You're supposed to see Batman having already gotten his ass kicked, thrown into another universe and just continues to get his ass kicked. And it's got like, you know, we needed to like find the bottom and then go lower. Uh, and it wouldn't have made sense to make him look amazing and sexy. And and look at his, you know, he just should look like a scary ass dude in a crazy outfit ready to F people up. I don't know if you remember this from the I want to say the 90s or late 80s Legends of the Dark Knight. They had this one really interesting story where uh, I believe Scarecrow was deluding him and thinking he was crazy and okay. really not Batman. And there was almost this like garbage bag sort of Batman costume. And I remember him putting it on in the in the story wow. and everything. And again, it served the story. Yeah. And yeah. It was this like the most ratty ass like yeah. Batman suit you've ever seen. Absolutely. We will not protect him. But right. again, it supported this delusion that Bruce yeah. is supposedly having. And no, it's it is it's great to have those creative opportunities. Yes. To take yeah, life very, very forms. I'm with you, man. Yeah. No, absolutely. Sure. sure. Uh Jay Roberts says, did the fact that Chip is writing the book make the transition from Wonder Woman to Batman easier? It did. It did. Because you know, we were had already uh, worked together. So it was a, a fairly easy, you know, it felt like I was just picking up in some ways where Daredevil was. Although I will say that I, you know, Chip is it's interesting. He's writing a little differently. Um, there is a, a, a weightiness to the Batman stuff that wasn't in the Daredevil. I mean, you know, there's always like some some tough moments and everything, but yeah, he's writing it like I mean, Chip is a fun guy, and he's yeah. he's obviously his humor is a big part of his personality. Uh, but if you read his scripts, you wouldn't know that that's that guy. You know, he's he's really trying hard. Uh, you can see him really thinking it through and, and adding a lot of weight and pathos to this thing. Uh, so in some ways, I had to almost like meet that level uh, and, and not just say, oh, well, we're just doing De Daredevil 2.0, you know, or DC's Daredevil. Uh, it really does. Hopefully, if I do my job, and I, I, it feels like a distinctly different book, although you know, we were had a great working relationship before this. He continues to surprise me as a writer. Yeah, especially yeah. when he gets the chance to write big two characters. Yeah. And I mean, God, I, I I first met him when Fraction introduced me to him when they were doing sex criminals. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, and I and I read some of the stuff and a lot of it was light, funny stuff, yeah, kind of edgy, funny stuff. And from Howard the Duck to now doing Batman and stuff, I'm just so happy for him. And also, I believe this weekend, I, you know, I I, I kind of stayed away from the headlines of uh, of San Diego because there's so many of oh, them. And yeah, I, yeah, I actually forgot stuff. it was going on. <laughs> There you go. I think we won an award for uh, public. It did. I went. I so yeah. when I when I realized it was happening, uh, so I, I logged on to X and uh, I saw oh people are winning awards. Holy shit! So I went to check to see if Chip had won, and uh, he won for his creator own book at uh, the Substack book he did. That yeah, did. Comicsology and Substack public domain. Yeah, I want to say yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'm, uh, I I he's, I'm proud of the guy. I sent him a congratulations, which he didn't respond to. Which kind of makes me laugh because I'm like, this is I know he's working. Uh, you know, he's I think the the public version of Chip where he, and then maybe I shouldn't talk about this, but the public version of Chip is always like jokey jokey. And it, you know, the 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 working version of Chip is like he's taking this very seriously, he's thinking it through. He's and because he's an artist, you know, he'll he will go over stuff in the story where he's like, you know, something little sometimes. It's like, ah, oh, that thing ought to be here. We should you know, like he's really, really, uh, he's really constructing this thing smartly. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure he lets you do your own thing. Oh like yeah, yeah. Ever sure. does he ever provide a breakdown or anything like that? Of no, no, uh, he has not as of yet. But what he will do is like uh, flesh out a concept. So, like for instance, when we were doing, as I mentioned, the first arc where it takes place on a different in a different universe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he wanted this idea of uh, instead of the, the Bat Cave, 
it's this uh, like Arkham, the, the Arkham Caves, right? It's Arkham Asylum meets the Batcave. And it's just been, it's Arkham Asylum on steroids or on Venom. Everything's crazier. And, um, you know, you wanted these kind of pathways that were going in all directions and connecting uh, tunnels and stuff. And you did a quick sketch just to like make that solid for me. Um, the note with the Batman suit, you know, he he did a quick sketch of like, hey, instead of the, the, the sort of chest pad, what if we did this big symbol? Um, and that's great because he can, you know, make like I'm a visual thinker, so he can flesh out an idea for me. Uh, and then lets me kind of do what it is I'm going to do. Right. And I'll bring weird ideas to him. Uh, I wanted to make, you know, he wanted Killer Croc to be huge because it's Killer Croc on Venom. And he's supposed to be a little more like uh, he's got a little dough. And I'm like, ah, what if we dress him up like a Peaky Blinder? He's got the little hat. And um, he <laughs> is cool with that. Like he he gets the visual side of the, the, sure. the storytelling um, and what that does. Like why would a guy like him just wear, say, a tuxedo? You know, like I didn't want the kingpin with like bad skin. I wanted it to be unique to that character. <laughs> so uh, and he's he's great. He's great for that. That's great, man. That's outstanding. All right. You might have to explain Patrick's comment here. Mike, the master of the interwebs and using social newspaper coupons. What the hell are you talking about? He's, he's making fun of my he's making fun of my Google.com. Yeah, Pat Patrick, he's a good dude. He's uh he's another good friend of mine. Uh he he puts together all the uh the 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 stuff for Jimmy and Amanda on Kickstarter. He's been like he's sort of a project manager and he's been helping me. Put together some of my kickstarters and the guys just uh he's he's a uh, he's one of those secret weapon type people who's like smarter than than we all deserve and he's a good dude he's, he's yeah that's cool i um i'm gonna see jimmy and amanda this coming weekend at terrific yeah is so are they there at the show he's gonna be there or not i don't know oh okay i wonder if he is you can he often is. He's, he's like sort of their uh their their alfred in the background making things happen yeah. Hey. Uh, yeah. I mean, Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy's in the midst of uh, Trigger Six or whatever his uh, current yeah, campaign yeah, with Amanda. Yeah, Absolutely, yeah. man. And and so, doing. Oh, that's some, great. Uh, he is gonna. He's gonna come. Well, Patrick, please. I hope uh, you'll introduce yourself to me. I'm doing please. a panel with uh, with Jimmy about uh, anti heroes, and oh, uh, awesome. certainly the, the Punisher is gonna come up. So yeah, that's the panel. I don't have a table, Patrick, but I am gonna be wandering around. So if you see me, now you know what I look like and everything. So <laughs> please say hello. No, that's great. I just great wonderful video. people, man. You'll you'll uh I don't know anybody that doesn't love them. That's excellent, man. No, I'm really excited. I I uh, forgive me, everybody. I really am excited for Terrific on this weekend. Mitch Halleck, the owner of the show, uh great ally to me and really lets me do a lot of fun panels. I'm doing either four or five panels this weekend. And it's going to be a lot of fun. And I'm, I'm, I'm really I wish I was it. going, man. I wish I was going. I think I'm going to put in a word. Honestly, Mike, I will. Okay. I, I will. I will talk to Mitch because it'd be great to have you there. And it's a fun. I started to say it's yeah, it's a casino, but it's just a fun resort. You don't need yeah. to. Don't worry about the gambling. There's yeah. like great yeah. pools, great golf courses. It's right there on the Mohegan River and everything. It's and it's always this really nice time of year. Yeah. So yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, I, I kick myself. I think Pat might have even push you know for me to check it out and i heard yeah. i heard about it from jerry jerry uh, ordway yeah, yeah maybe next year for sure uh you know i hope the stars align and then uh, yeah we're hanging out next year at this thing that nice. would be great yeah uh, let's see i'm looking at what else have i covered everything everyone on facebook who might be chatting i have to apologize i'm not exactly sure what happened but um it seems like i'm uh, these days i'm only exclusively getting uh youtube comments might be because I'm using stream elements as well. So um, and for everyone watching, if you want to place a comment while we're talking or in future word balloons, for now, come to the YouTube channel and, and I'll be able to talk about it on the air. But, uh, oh, there you go. And, yeah, uh, Patrick does say that he did try for this year. But, yeah, there were a lot of creators that wanted to come to Terrific gotcha. and, and, you know, Mitch has a budget and, you know, it's not limitless. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's it's tough sometimes. And, I you know, the good thing awesome. is he does make notes. And definitely tries to get people the following year. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Awesome. No, absolutely, man. Um, so you've got uh, you've got a creator own thing brewing uh, right now. I, I thought I did. I'm, I'm not so sure. I want it, to. It's. Uh, I'm not sure how to talk about it where it doesn't. The the thing I mentioned earlier. Uh, it was you know things in comics move very very fast and there's 
you know, a company that looks like they're setting the world on fire. And then 15 minutes later, they're like, eh, womp, womp. So it, happens. Um, it was a thing I was, I would thought might be exciting. And I thought I would, you know, sign on, but um, in the end, I'm not, I, I, I don't know. So it's, it's, it's probably the best answer. I am doing uh, my own stuff, obviously back on Patreon and, uh, I started my career with a book called Hysteria, self create a, a self published thing, and I've been slowly trying to build that up again. And uh, I I'm, I have enough material to make. So Hysteria started with an ash can that I made. You, ash cans, if you're uh, you know not a hundred years old, was the old comics we'd make by hand. You know, you photocopy the thing and staple them yourself, <laughs> and hope to like <laughs> sell them to people for a buck or something. Sure. Um, and I made them when I was living in Philly and just like in the late nineties and just dropped them off at every comic shop in Philly. And, uh, that all, a lot of good things sprang from that or sprung. I'm not, I'm not good at English. And, uh, <laughs> Jamal, thank Jamal you, man. We all want more hysteria. That's awesome. And, uh, so on uh, back on Patreon, uh, every Wednesday, we try to post something hysteria related. And for a while there was just whatever I could, squeeze in like it, it, for a while there was just like one panel a week and i managed to get about uh 10 pages in i think and so i'm toying with the idea of like I, I i never finished the image series that i was doing there last um so i'm toying with the idea of maybe revisiting that but like starting it from scratch like redrawing all the the first uh two issues that were published and starting the thing with a Nash can, I, I, I kind of, I know this sounds goofy, but, you know, social media is falling apart. And there's this emphasis on, like, comic creators got to be on social media. And uh, in my mind, you know, media doesn't have to be on your phone and they can still be social if you just hand the things out to people. So I'm toying with the idea of making a Hysteria Ash can and uh, maybe just honestly, like, kickstarting the thing with the end goal of like sending every comic shop that wants one, like uh, uh, 10 free copies or something. Wow. I even like trying to make money out of it. Literally just like, here's some free comics. I don't know. Let's see if anything happens. If anybody getting falls. them out there. So, yeah. Well, you and, know, Chicago has a great zine uh, following right. still. I don't know how it is at Philly and some of the other cities. I'm sure New York still has a good zine. Yeah. Right. There's some yeah. festival here somewhere that I haven't, I've never been to. And I've been, you know, through my Patreon, I put out a quarterly zine, of, like sketch zine that I then collect into these art books. Uh, and then I do my little warm ups zines. So that's kind of got me, you know, I'm at the issue four with warm ups and about 12 issues of the All City Quarterly on my Patreon. And I just love, making these little goofy things. I mean, yeah. so much of my work is, you know, behind the sort of Disney Marvel slash Warner Brothers DC bubble. And like, there's always a, there's always a couple levels of detachment from me and the people enjoying the work I'm making. So these things are just fun because I get to just, you know, directly make them and, and hand them to you. So Creator own wise, it's a lot of art books. It's a lot of going back to my roots with hysteria and maybe making this uh, ash can and seeing what happens with it. That's great, man. Uh, Adriano uh, praising you and says Mike's the best. This guy, man. So it, it uh, Adriano is inked uh, uh, a good part. So all the Batman stuff. Oh, I think wow. all, yeah. I think all but one issue of Daredevil. Um, Wild cards, like a lot of my stuff, and the guy is just absolutely magical. The guy, like I, it's you know, he's one of he's one of those inkers that even other inkers I love will go like, I don't know how he's doing that, you know. So uh, love, love him, love him to, to death, and I hope you're doing well, man. I hope you're 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 taking care of yourself, and uh, we'll talk soon, man. Uh, a dude, great job. I'm really glad you're watching, and uh, apologies for only showing uh, Mike's pencils and not showcasing more of your inks because yeah. no, man, you guys are a great team yeah. and you're really, you really are killing it and everything. Yeah. yeah so. I, I joke, I joke with my wife that uh, Adriano's like a biker shorts. He makes any ass look good. Even me. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's yeah. awesome. Jay Roberts says if folks have loved Mike's Deadpool or Batman and have not seen his creator owned book hysteria, Oh my God, they haven't seen Mike's best work. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, so I, I was notorious for every book I did had a different style and it probably hurt my career early on. Uh, but I just creatively that 
is my happy place. Uh, now everybody sort of knows my, I just sort of developed a like Hollywood style, like a sort of action movie style. And that's what I usually draw my mainstream work in. Uh, and Hysteria is very much not drawn like that. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's way more cartoony, way more just elastic and fun and crazy. And uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to slowly bring it back and it's going to, you know, we'll see what happens. That sounds great, man. I'm really glad to hear that. Uh, Baked Bean has an ambition. Mike should hit me up in a decade once I've made my name and we'll make a cool ho uh, horror comic. <laughs> And put right on. In, uh, in, uh, to manifest and all that. All right. Yeah, well, I believe in that, dude. I mean, that's why I'm going to make this ash can again because it worked the first time. <laughs> Sounds great. Yeah. Seriously, Mike, you're killing it. Thank um, you, man. Uh, and again, looking forward to the start of Gotham War. Has it, when does yeah. it start? Uh, so we have this nightmares thing going on now. Yeah. Yeah. Most nice of yeah. that, right? So okay. whenever that is, I, I unfortunately, I'm sorry. Forgive me. I don't know. Um, was that? Do you know, Mike? Was that was Night Terrors kind of created to kind of give everyone a chance to catch up or whatever? I mean, that's what I heard. Not from DC people. I heard it. I've done a couple signings, and that's what the retailers tell me. I, I confess that I don't. Uh, I keep my head down, and I don't generally ask about. I mean, I wouldn't even know that they were uh, tied in, except that we have a. You know, like I, I know with the schedule, it came up. Um, yeah. But uh, I, with, with what we're doing is, I guess it's kind of an alpha and omega, you know, like you do the, I, the beginning, then there's the event, and then the end. Uh, I think Jorge's doing the actual uh, uh, Gotham War comic itself. Jimenez? Yeah, right? man, because that guy is such a rock star. He's, oh, he's a beast too, absolutely. Yeah, dude, that guy is, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen a guy, he's a tall, beautiful Spaniard. No, uh, ah. he, he is. He has no business being that nice. If I was that good looking, I would just probably kick people in the shins and not talk to anyone. Um, <laughs> and he's and he's as talented as he is uh, uh, handsome. And the guy is, you know, we we uh, sort of you know tag team that last issue. I guess it was technically Batman nine hundred. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. And I joke that he did all the heavy lifting because he did all the stuff with Batman bouncing around the multiverse and all the various versions. And I'm like, when I looked at those pages, I told him, I'm like, dude, I am so grateful that I'm not doing that part of this book. <laughs> um, and I, I don't know that anybody else could have handled it as well as he did. It's just, it's magical stuff, man. It's uh, if if you haven't read it yet, and you're a Batman fan, you owe it to yourself to check out that issue 900. It's it, just skip, just flip past my stuff, jump into Jorge's stuff, and you will be absolutely, it's worth the price of admission. That's so great. Well, and I'll tell people, and I'm glad you mentioned it, uh, reach back for uh, when uh, Rick Remender and Mike were doing Fear Agent. That was yeah. really great stuff. And also, uh, hell, the first conversation we ever had when you were doing The Unmen. Oh, um, man. Yeah. 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 I've been how long ago was Mike. That's wild, man. Yeah, that's it. We're talking, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I was sorry, Vertigo. I, yeah, I want to say yeah. 2005, man. Like I said, no, yeah. Mike, you were Mike, you were one of the first uh, word balloon guests. I'm not that's kidding. Awesome. So, you know what's funny is I think I might have even, I think I bugged you. You were very supportive early on. I think I reached out because I had, I still had this sort of self publishing mentality. And when they put me on Unmen, which was, you know, a Swamp Thing related book at Vertigo, I thought, well, let me do a press tour. And I reached out and you were super kind. And uh, I, I'm always grateful to you, man. Thank you. Oh, it's dude. Again, I it's always good to meet people. And uh, I, truly, everybody, this is the thing. If if someone comes to me uh, and asks to be on Word Balloon, I ask to check out the work or I see it on the stands. And I judge, and it's like, okay, because I don't do critiques. The only thing I critique is Star Trek, unfortunately. <laughs> the consternation of some who are enjoying new Star Trek. I, I drew I'm, some of that, too, man. When did you draw Star Trek? I, I drew uh, <laughs> uh, something. Uh, it was like a Tribbles-based story. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, for IDW. Because I, I did ask, yeah. you want to draw some Star Trek? And I'm like, dude, I will draw it as long as you don't make me draw any established Star Trek characters. And they said, can you draw a Tribble? I'm like... Got it. <laughs> so that is hilarious. Yeah, yeah, I've I've been quietly around and I've gotten to draw just about everything in fandom, which is very weird for me. I even I even got to co-create an alien race for Star Wars universe. Oh wow! Yeah, I don't don't ask me what the name of them are, but uh, 
but yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's been a weird time, man. In, in all the years I've known you. Outstanding. Well, again, I'm really glad we've, uh, we've become friends and I'm sorry we don't see each other more. Next and year. I really, one day I really got to meet your wife, man. That's, oh uh, man. Yeah. Great. She, you'll, you'll love her. So, uh, she might yell at you in Greek though. Well, and that's it. She'll totally uh, get mad because I'm with the worst Greek in the world. Oh, man, she'll do that Greek thing. She won't. She'll, she won't. She, she'll just quietly judge you and look at you like, ah, malakas. Exactly. <laughs> the, the, one, the ones that find out I don't speak much Greek, but I certainly know what you just said. Yeah. It's like, you know, it's like, yeah. It's like okay, sure, you know the dirty words, but yeah. my my sister and my oldest cousin is like my older brother. They are so converse and can really speak to the old people and speak to the old country people yeah, and yeah. do it very fluently yeah, uh, for yeah. being English speaking people first. But um, yeah, no, I suck. I, my, my uh, parents were like, well, if you don't want to go to Greek school and I was like, okay, see you later. You that, that's basically <laughs> it. Like I got three kids, the girls, uh, the two girls are the older ones and they all both went to Greek school. Like my oldest speaks fluent Greek. And my boy was like, yeah, I don't want to go to extra school. Nah, I don't think so. So he speaks zero. He said when he was little, he'd tell my wife, like, ah, don't talk blah 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 to me. And what are they, do they have Greek names? Do they do they uh, Greek yeah? Greek? I mean, like it's Sofia, Maria, sure. and, and Mahailis, which is Michael, is named after his pops. Oh his wow, wife. okay. Yeah, we have the same name. Everybody assumes he's junior, but he's actually named after my wife's dad. Oh, uh, that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. yeah Very yeah. cool. Oh my all right, uh Jay Robert pointing out that yeah, I guess one of the uh, Star Trek Aliens uh, series of one shots. Yeah, so that's excellent. Um yeah, man, that's wonderful. Very, very cool. Uh, dude, as always, well done. Thank um, you. you know, I, I'm glad it was my idea to talk this time. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, truly, I mean, I've been I've really been enjoying what you've been doing on Batman and, and Ch with Chip in general. So congratulations on all that and uh, you, more sir. power to you, man. So, uh, you. yeah, you know, and really, when whenever you got something new and you want to talk, obviously, you know, uh, the door's Hell yeah. Open. Yeah, man, I, I will definitely bug you once, uh, you know, I'm, I'm I, I I feel a change are coming, so I'll bug you. Excellent to hear. Oh, that's nice. Steve Conley, everybody. Hey, uh, what's up? Very cool, man. Got to get Steve on. I keep meaning to uh, to make that happen, and shame on me, Steve. You uh, I haven't it. forgotten, so we'll uh, we'll try sooner than later, you know? Yeah. Uh, but anyway, everybody, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, tomorrow night, uh, Heavy Metal Zone, Jeff, Jesse Blaze Snyder uh, comes on the show to wow. talk about a new Kickstarter that he's got going on for his book, Rock of Ages. And as I said, Wednesday night live, I'll have Sean Martinborough on. Can I wait to talk to Sean? And then Wednesday in the afternoon, and patrons, be aware of this. I'll make a post. But I'm talking to Sven Gulli, the horror movie host. You're kidding. <laughs> oh, I love him. He's That's Chicago. Great. He's, oh, yeah, we've been friends for a long time. And Frank Miller Presents, the comic line that Frank is doing, yeah. uh, put out a Sven Gulli anthology. Wow, and man. It's that's great. so great. It's, oh, it's great, man. Chris Jones and um, Art Baltazar and Franco uh, all drew stories wow. in it. Really, really cool. Gee whiz, man. That's awesome. Yeah, that's – I will tell – I have a – one of my kids is a big horror buff, so I will tell her for sure. There you go. Well, Baked Bean, there you go. Future uh, future fan of your uh, future horror work. So <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. Uh, until next time, stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy.